you very much. Um, I will speak out loudly uh, rather than because I wander around, so it's going to boom. So uh, I'm coming to you from the Isle of Lismore. I uh, talked to you about the NAVE project, uh, and the, the, I'm going to talk particularly about the week's work that we did in August this year. Uh, this is community archaeology, and it's jointly uh, Lismore Parish Church and Lismore Historical Society. And these are all the logos. Um, on the left, uh, uh, Common Echo Lismore, the Lismore Historical Society, and the Parish Church on the right. We are funded on, in this year by uh, the Heritage Lottery Fund, uh, and a small uh, addition from uh, Argyll and Butte Council under their third sector funding, and very strongly supported by Historic Environment Scotland, particularly uh, Dr. John Raven. And uh, the uh, professional input comes from Argyll Archaeology, uh, from Claire Ellis, who is here today. And I want to take you to Lismore. This is a smaller island than we've been looking at. Uh, and uh, it's a one mile across and ten miles uh, in length. Uh, a holy island, uh, the holy island of St. Maluak. The background to this more, the background to this site that we're talking about, uh, Maluak, uh, although not as celebrated as Columba, is attested in, uh, in, in the documents. Um, he was a contemporary of uh, Columba, and we're pretty certain that he sent up his muntir, his uh, site for proselytizing the area on this moor. We don't know what happened in, uh, to the site uh, when the Norse came, but the Norse, we do have Norse uh, evidence on the island, uh, place names. We also have uh, one artifact, a gold artifact from that period, it's generally thought that the successor to St. Muluk would be in a Chaldee church. <coughs> and the question is whether when the uh, Diocese of Argyll was founded on Lismore in 1190, was there a church there uh, from, from the Chaldee period? Um, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, um, and the su su suggestion is that if there is anything from that period, it's under the present church. So we want to get some very small people to go under the floor and have a look. Uh, when you, you ask why did they set up the bishopric, when they broke up the, the big bishopric of Dunkeld, why did they put uh, uh, the bishopric of Argyle uh, on this moor? Well, of course, it was on the seaway. It was easier to travel by sea than, it, than by land at that time. And it was uh, at the center of the MacDougall territory, the MacDougalls being the greatest family in the West, uh, b before they decided to uh, choose the wrong side in the, in the War of Independence. And uh, it's, it's arguable that our cathedral and the two medieval castles on this moor are the best suite of medieval buildings in the whole of the Highlands and Islands. The timeline that's accepted uh, in general is that although the uh, um, the diocese was, wasn't set up, was set up around 1190. It's thought that the, the, uh, the, the, the choir or the chancel, whichever you want to call it, which is now the parish church, was built around 1250. And that the nave of the cathedral was later, uh, and later yet, uh, a western tower. It was in ruins by the 16th century, the bishops had already decided to go and live in Danoon rather than on Lismore by that time. And then in seven, around 1750, the building was remodeled as a reformed church, and it was remodeled again in 1900. This is what you see today. It looks like uh, a, a fairly ordinary parish church, except uh, for the buttresses, which are in, uh, a good clue. And if you see at the back of the church, there are uh, corbels, which obviously were supporting something behind the church. So we're looking to the, uh, that's the east end, so that's the altar end, and the nave obviously would be behind. And we are standing in this photograph in the ancient graveyard um, uh, of, of, of the cathedral, 
and I won't be talking about it today, but last year what we did was to lift all of the uh, medieval grave slabs, some of them Iona, some of them Lockaw, and put them in a shelter. That was last year's project. As I was saying, if you look at outside, it looks like fairly ordinary parish church, but inside there's quite a lot of medieval detail left. The sedilia and the piscina uh, for, the, the, for the celebration of Mass. And the floor has been lifted, so you can't actually see where they sat. And this is the west arch, which causes a lot of uh, head, uh, head scratching as to... Uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the arch, it doesn't look right for this uh, sort of quality of building. Uh, but we also do have quite a bit of medieval carving in, within the church. So the, we know quite a lot about the, the chancel or the choir, whichever you wish to call it. But this is what the, this is the nave. Um, and you'll see it's a bit of a sorry state. Um, we're looking, we're obviously looking from the west towards the chancel. Are you hearing me all right? Yeah. Yes. Good. Um, now, um, oops. No. Uh, there was an archaeological dig of the nave in the 1950s by Brown and Duncan. And they were able to establish that, yes, there was a nave, uh, and, and, and the proposal was a tower and that it was the same uh, width as the chancel uh, and aisleless and possibly no uh, transepts. If you see a, a, um, a, a, a wall across the middle, that's, uh, uh, that was built around 1750 um, and it encloses the minister's lair. So that makes that made it quite difficult for the for the um, for, for for the dig at that time. Um, so if that, there was an archaeological dig, but obviously the site has been allowed to deteriorate, and so uh, what were the aims and what were the questions of our project, which was this year's uh, community dig? We want to start to reveal the outline of the nave and tower. It's very overgrown and neglected. We want to protect and value the site. As I said, it's possibly the part of the best suite of medieval buildings in the Highlands and Islands. And we want to arrange safe access by the public. You can't actually get at it. You couldn't actually get at it uh, safely until this year. What are the questions? Uh, we'd like to know the dates of the building. I mentioned the 1250 for the, for the uh, chancel, but that's not set in concrete. Uh, where was the entry to the nave? If there was a west tower, uh, obviously you weren't entering by a great west uh, arch. But it, it, is there a west, a west tower? We'll talk about that in a moment. And uh, what happened to the site post-Reformation? So what we were... This is a scheduled monument, of course. So we had... Claire had to uh, uh, arrange uh, permission... And we were restricted only in this first year to reopening the three trenches that Brown and Duncan opened. So we weren't expecting a lot of fines. We were thinking about the outline of the building rather than finding fines. Uh, and um, the other thing we had to do was uh, that for the part of the fence that we were about to erect to protect the site, we had to uh, excavate each of the holes for the fence posts. And this is the, uh, you can see the red outline is the outline of the scheduled area where it says Kilmalua Cathedral, that's the parish church. You can see uh, behind it, uh, to the west of it, uh, the, the rather overgrown area which we were working in. To the south, uh, here is the old churchyard and there's a new churchyard that, uh, above. And what we, what, we would, what we did was to erect a fence, the orange uh, to protect the area. And here is the team. It was a community. Um, we have Claire Ellis here and Mark Thacker, who is a, a, a masonry uh, archaeologist. But um, importantly, we have uh, Mary Ann and Andy here, who were absolutely centrally important, experienced uh, volunteers to the, to the success of our work. We had 12 or so people every day for the eight days. Uh, from the island, from the mainland. There are others, um, Neil at the back there, who were with us every day. 
uh, and we were blessed because it only rained two of the eight days. It really did rain on the two eight days, but for the rest of the time, we had uh, very clement weather. So this is, uh, this is these, what are the results? Uh, if I can get this, yeah. So there's the, there's at the back of the chancel there, which is the parish church. We were, we exposed the west uh, wall of, uh, up to here, of the, of the, of the nave. And here is Claire a recording uh, the bottom of the wall. I think these are called drip stones. And uh, a lot of the, uh, I, I didn't mention at the beginning, was that this more as a limestone island. The whole island is limestone, so a large part of the building was in limestone. But, uh, but the features were in sandstone from uh, Morven. And here is clear as recording the dripstones, I think they're called, at the bottom of the west wall of the nave. And here is one of the, the classic diagrams that, which were produced during the, during the day. This is the, the question, there are question marks over this tower. It's at the west of the nave and uh, Grant and Duncan assumed it was a tower. We are still not sure about the nature of this because there's a big hole in it there as you see and uh, Claire may want to say something about that but in fact it's, it looks as though it's a hollow wall. Uh, so there are lots of questions, questions for the future. And here is Mark Thacker, uh, uh, he is sampling the mortar because of the clever technique he has been developing for dating mortar from the uh, charcoal inclusions using a carbon-14 technique. And um, this, he was able to get date datable samples and we will see what results he gets from that. Here's a mortar sample. Now, the big surprise, I said at the beginning, we were just opening up uh, um, trenches which had already been dug and, and filled in. So there shouldn't be anything in there, but look. <laughs> so this was a bit, a bit of a surprise. And uh, what I should say is that uh, in the middle, what Brown and Duncan did, one of their trenches was right in the middle of the nave because they wanted to get down and to, and to find the floor level. Uh, to what the floor was and what the level was and relate that to the level of the chancel. Um, now, uh, we, we uh, re-excavated that hole, that square in the middle of the chancel, and on the way down, immediately realised there was a lot of, lot of mixed bone in that hole. And some fairly gowlish... Uh, Brown Duncan originally found 80 skulls in this hole, and you see some of the skulls are present. One thing that interests me a lot in this is that, is that um, of the teeth that we found in, in, in the dig, they were, they were very good quality. See, this person here uh, still has quite a good mouthful. Um, very few articulate. This, is, this was a pile of bones, and it was mixed species. It's human, cattle, sheep, dogs, roe deer, possibly even red deer, all in a month. What's that all about? We don't know. Um, a lot of fun um, washing, tremendous amount of washing to be done. Very cheap. This is, you can see, good weather. It wasn't raining that day. Um, and we were also looking for, uh, I mentioned the fact that the, the building was mainly built of limestone, but all the features would have been in sandstone. And where is it? Um, the, the, the day was. Uh, at ground level, so there must be a large amount of stone around, and there are bits and pieces. Um, we know that the, that the manse was built from a lot of the stone. Um, these were three pieces which um, Mark and Claire were able to relate to one another. It gives us a start to understand the quality of the, of the nave, the quality of the building. And uh, also going around and looking around the area, looking for, for dressed stone. Here's one we hadn't noticed before, which Mark found in a wall just beside the church. Uh, this was a community venture, and so we had an open day uh, on the 
seventh day of the of the project, and we had a great deal of interest. Ninety five visitors on that day, and over the uh, week or eight days, we had probably one hundred and fifty people visited. Very gratifying interest, and interest in the future. People saying, "What are we going to do next?" Um, when I say community scrutiny, this is the session clerk. Um, from the, of the parish church making sure that we were fulfilling our work and I think that's Andy in the hole and you can see how, how, how deep that hole, the, the hole in the nave the, the square in the nave is very deep um, part of the pro pro project is uh, public access but also public understanding so we've, we've generated a temporary interpretation board to say what are we up to, this will be around for uh, about three years and then when we've finished, well, if we do finish the project, uh, there will be a permanent board explaining uh, all the questions that we, we, we still don't have answers to. And here we are, that's it back at the end of the project, back to normal. Uh, but there's a fence there which allows us to control stock because there are there is uh, still um, the use of this area still for cattle as well as sheep grazing as you know it, um, the historic environment Scotland are quite yep yeah, yeah, see I'm nearly finished um, the historic environment Scotland are generally happy for sheep to graze uh, areas like this but not cattle so we have to have, uh, part of our funding was to get this area fenced so that we could control livestock. So the future, dating work on the mortar and the bones. Uh, what About the bones, what on earth was this about? If we can get a date on some of the bones, it will give us an idea where they dumped from the chancel uh, when they turned the chancel into a, a, a parish church. Um, the fact that the teeth were rather good suggests that they were probably important people, or maybe very young people. Um, uh, or was it an epidemic? Was it just a, a, a rushed job? Um, so we'll, we'll know something more about that as time goes on. We want to uncover, record, protect and interpret the, un the unexcavated walls. We want to solve questions like entrance to the nave, uh, character of the tower, it seems a bit strange, floor levels, find some more carved masonry, and then possibly in longer term investigate the wider area around the cathedral, what were the ancillary buildings, um, what, can, we, can we find anything from beforehand, it would be great if you could get indications of there having been a Chaldee church there beforehand. That's me finished.